add Durol. Adenol is what a CPA does down in the south. <laughs> we go Adenol up now. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Boogie Knight here, and welcome back to another review. As always, I'm joined by the other half of the Snark Squad, the one and only Ray. What's going on? Not much. How are you? Another day in purgatory, as per usual. Been a how we so we've been we watched this movie like what like two three weeks ago maybe. I think it was actually a month ago. Like there has been a lot of shit going on in both of our lives, <laughs> a lot. That's putting it mildly, and I still even haven't finished editing Chase in the train wreck because I came up with two other instances where I had to edit into boy. Yeah, and I've been like busy with you know trolls and you know coming out on top. So yeah, you really have had quite a busy time. So. It's all good. I came out on top, so that's all that matters. Like, I proved a point. Don't fuck with Ray. <laughs> I, th I think we all know this, so could you put that in a memo and title it Shit We Already Know? No, just... No, we can't do this anymore. Just, just go. <laughs> <laughs> right. It has been this long since we've snarked with one another that we are a little bit rusty. But I think this movie in particular is going to, you know, de-rust the snark cannon. Needless oh, to say. Yeah, sorry for it. <laughs> More than Kirk Cameron... Well, okay, nothing will ever top Kirk Cameron in the snark department, but this... I don't know about you, but the movie that we watched, which is Sharknado 3, by the way, yes, the saga continues. I, this was probably not as my favorite. The second one I still think is my favorite one because of how self-aware it was. This one... Yeah, this Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I said this one took itself a little more seriously, but it was still hammy as all get out. The second one was definitely the best in the series because it knew it was a parody. It knew it was a joke, so it parodied it. It was a parody of itself, I guess. I don't know how to... Like, they, they ran with it, whereas the third one was like, we got this massive, like, series. We might as well, like, do what we can with it. And it's like... It wasn't as good. It was still funny. Don't get me wrong. But, like, the second one will definitely always be the best. I, in some ways, I don't think you've ever seen the Hellraiser series. Uh, of course I have. Okay. So, well, okay. Wow, I mean, well, I mean, you you're not the horror you're not a horror buff, so that's why I have to ask the vetting questions. I so love horror. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh no, it, it's heavy metal that you don't like. Not metal music, no. Okay. I love what the hell, dude? You should know me better than now. Dude, I write more books. Dude, I'm running. I've gotten five hours of sleep in three days. Sod off. I'm sorry. Well, you shouldn't be on the internet crying about your problems. I'm just joking. Look into my eye. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so I've missed you too. Uh, so I feel like this series is a little bit like the Hellraiser saga. Like the the first one was kind of feeling its way through. The second one was like the creme de la creme, and like this one's kind of like trying to ride the wave just a little bit i mean i don't i guess per me personally i thought the first one was the best one but i see where you're coming from though like the first one is it's good and then the second one was really good like it it took what they had and they made it better mm -hmm. kind of like it was it was kind of like a flattening the curve it's went <laughs> yeah it was kind of a bell curve so to speak kind of yeah yeah i mean I, I like the first Hellraiser better than the second one, but I, I, a lot of fan people, it's pretty polarizing. They either think the first one is, or the second one is, you know, well, and never two shall meet. But I think it all comes down to opinions, so that's all that really matters. So, and everyone can have their own opinions. I just personally think the first one's the best because I, and I also read the, read the book too. So. Oh, okay. So you, wow, you read the Hellbound Heart. Nice. Well, yeah, because the Hellbound Heart. Is yeah, I was, like, so obsessed with the first movie. That I was like, let's read the first one. And, yeah, it was, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just a fan of the story in general, so. Oh, yeah. No, it's very interesting. But we're not talking about Hellraiser. No. I mean, we could... Hellraiser now? We're, yeah, we, we just spent five minutes going off on a tangent. Welcome back to, uh, <laughs> welcome back to Kill Night, y'all. This is how we do things. I mean, okay, so, this movie, <laughs> as we said, we both agreed on, this movie is definitely not as good as the second one. 
Uh, but it's still hammy as hell. I mean, in the first, like, five minutes, you've got Mark Cuban in there just, like, doing all sorts of, like, wacky shenanigans. I mean, it still has the shenanigans. It still has the gore. It still has the poorly, poorly rendered CGI. Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas still has better CGI than this movie. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, mean, they have an Uncle Bill, and that'll never top anything. <laughs> Uncle that, Bill. Nothing will Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill makes everything better. Like, if Uncle Bill was in this movie, I mean, we talked about Kim Coates in the We wish we had Kim Coates in the last movie. I just thought it was something funny. Wouldn't it be funny if, like, the, in the Sharknado, there's, like, sharks flying around, and then you see Uncle Bill just passing by with his knife. <laughs> 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 and, he just, and he just turns and just stares at the camera with this look of, like, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Nothing can touch Uncle Bill. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, well, what I liked about Mark Cuban being in the movie was the fact that he's on Shark Tank. You know, the shark. And he was in Shark uh, Sharknado. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. I mean... Going, I mean, going back to what we talked about in the last movie, I mean, I think, as you said in the last review in Sharknado 2, was it was the cameos that made this movie, like, Yeah, dude, okay, so... Special. Second, exactly. When I, okay, so the reason why the second one was so amazing was because I had Billy Ray Cyrus. When I saw Billy Ray Cyrus, I was, like, done. I was like, this is the best I've ever seen. I was so excited for that cameo. No, I mean, no, I, I, mean, I think, for me... <laughs> I mean, I think when anybody who's seen this movie is going to immediately think, you know, David Hasselhoff was the creme de la creme for this one, you know, as like the just no, 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 it was Ann Coulter. Oh my god, I know, Ann Coulter, she was the cherry on top of this, because it was like, anyone who knows um, Ann Coulter knows she's just a joke in general, and the fact that she got a gig in this movie is way too good for her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seriously, like, when, because I think when we both saw her, like, we just stared at each other like, no. I was like, what? Yeah. No, they got her to do this movie. <laughs> I'm like, oh, good, the Antichrist is here. <laughs> okay. Politics. I just want to point this out. If you guys don't know who Ann Coulter is, just do a little bit of research. But also, if you want to see how much no one likes her, watch the comedy. <laughs> watch the Comedy Central roast of Rob Lowe. That will tell you how much like no one likes her at all. Like no one, no one likes her. She is horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean she. I mean, we often talk about the trope butt monkey, and for those that don't know what the butt monkey trope is, somebody who's the butt of every joke. Oh yeah, she's the butt of every fucking joke. She, Ann Coulter defines the term butt monkey more than Uncle Bill, more than David A.R. White, more than Ray Wise. You know what I just realized, though, is that despite all this, she still survives in the movie. <laughs> I know. Oh, as far as we can tell, we don't know, because she doesn't. She, we don't see her after like the first 15 minutes. Well, like, after the beginning of the movie was over with, we never saw her again, so I, I assume she survived, because, you know. Uh, see, I'm optimistic enough to know, think that she, you know, died off camera. <laughs> I mean, she does look like suntan hide, so, I mean, you know. She is kind of a vampire, when you think about it. Well, I don't know. I mean, between her and Kelly and um, Conway, there's just... It's very, there's, it's very slim. Like, I think Kelly is the vampire more than anything. They both could have, they could both appear in Daywalkers and still, you know, turn out okay. Anyway, so with the case of cameos, you got Ann Coulter, which obviously we just ripped the parse. You got Mark Cuban as the president of the United States. Mm hmm Think about that for a hot second. You yep. have you have retired well, I don't know, retired. You have former wrestler and musician Chris Jericho for like ten minutes just so he can like scream at his high pitched falsetto voice when he gets ripped off. Literally on the roller coaster. I mean, who who else have appeared in this movie, cameo wise? Not too many like notice, notable people. I want to say because I mean, I mean, the second one. Like, I remember watching the second one with you, and I was just like, oh my god, that's this, and that's this person, and it was like mm -hmm. it was exciting. This one, it was like Mark Cuban, and then um, Ann Coulter, David you know, Hasselhoff. The, the re yeah, David Hasselhoff, and the rest were just like, meh. Well, he's the, okay. forgettable. Exactly. The thing about David Hasselhoff, though, is he's a joke, but, like, he's still pretty relevant because he still makes cameos in, like, major box office movies, so. Um, he's kind of like a, like an, he's kind of like a D-list, like a D -list celebrity, an A-list celebrity, <laughs> so. Yeah. It's, it's different. Hasselhoff 
kind of for me he's kind of like william shatner or one of the baldwin brothers like he, he's just he's he's cannon fodder and he's so aware that he's cannon fodder he's going he's going to just live it up he's like i don't care well, I mean, I mean, they worship him in Germany, but I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so. I mean, he's he's kind of like Ron Jeremy when you think about it. Like he's typecasted as this one type of role. Okay, that's not nice. Let's not, you know, let's not insult Ron Jeremy like that. <laughs> Tommy Wiseau, sure. If Tommy oh, Wiseau no. shows up in this series, I will just die happy. Tommy Wiseau is a god. Don't you ever compare him to David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Oh hi, Mark. <laughs> I know. I hope he's in the movie. I'm so I'm so excited to watch the last uh, three movies. There's six in the series, and one of them is space. I think it? I think we're stretching this out just so we don't have to go back to God's Not Dead three. I mean, I really don't want to go back to it, but I will because I ha we ha we should. But like, I'm you have an obligation <laughs> to finish this we series. To, we have to let the Christians of the world know that this movie's on. And I love that freaking comment you got about, like, how she give you a thumbs down. That and was it, brilliant. You're like, have a good day. She goes, thank you, you too. It's like, you stupid bitch. All right, so <laughs> before we go back into this review, we pretty much summed that up. So going back, harkening back. So when Ray and I did the God's Not Dead 2 review, I don't know how long ago this was. This was when I grew up. I was still in the hotel. <laughs> I, yeah, this was like late last year, I think. Anyway, so we... This is so. This was probably at least six months ago. Somebody found our review, found my tweet going to the review, gave me thumbs down, saying something like "This is not cool" or something like that. I thought it was just thumbs down emojis. Okay. Oh, maybe it was I that. Okay. I don't know what comment she left on the video. That could have been it. But like that, on the tweet, she just wrote two thumbs down, and that, then you're. Yeah. Just thank you, you too. <laughs> How else are you going to respond to that sort of thing? I mean, I, I think yeah, I think her like comment on the review itself was more in depth. That it was just <laughs> so I'm like, I, well. <laughs> so I always like to do snarky comments. So if someone says something like snarky to me, I'm going to say something snarky back. Like this one time. Um, At fan camp. Well, I got a message one time of this guy calling me baby, and I wrote a tweet like, "Okay, don't call me baby if you just met me." You know, like that's really not cool. I don't want I don't want people calling me baby. And this one guy goes, "You sound really full of yourself." So I left a gift going, um, "Go be irrelevant somewhere else." Like nobody wants to hear that. Shit. See, I, I still I, I still like my comment that I sent you the other day was, "I didn't insult you, but Mother Nature beat me to it." Oh my god, that was awesome. <laughs> we didn't want to say who it was too, but yeah, that was pretty funny. Boy. Anyway, so that pretty much I means so that's what the cast of Cam is, and of course you still have Tara Reid being her plastic Barbie doll, emotionless cell. Actually, no, I, I take that back. She had more emotion in this one than any of the previous ones. Yeah, she fucking you, you could tell because you know her uh, neck being bulged a lot. So <laughs> that's, that's the bulk of her emotion. It's about how big her neck muscles are protruding. And she still <laughs> had the mechanical hand. You know, she fucking wore <laughs> she wore a glove too, and it was like like I know that the the point of that was to like hide that the robotic arm. Yeah, it didn't even look robotic in the fucking glove. You know what I mean? Like I, this is really stupid picking here. Like I'm just picking apart a very minor detail here. But like I would say, if you're going for a mechanical arm, at least make it look mechanical through the glove, because otherwise she's just like moving it like a normal hand. Part of me wonders if that was done almost kind of like a mockery of Star Wars. You know, he's stepping into it. Anyways, what now? <laughs> Speaking of shitty movies, you know, there you go. Art imitates life. Uh, no, I was just saying that part of me wonders with like the glove, if that was supposed to be kind of like a homage to Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker in Star Wars because they got the black glove put over the mechanical hand. Or am I giving this movie too much credit? Maybe. That's a good point. I never really thought about that. I'm not a huge Star Wars buff, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, I mean, basically, when in Return of the Jedi and Luke gets his hand blast shot off or whatever like that or something like No, it was in the second one when he lost his hand to Darth Vader. He had a mechanical glove, put, a mechanical hand put back on, and then he put a black glove over it. You're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that makes oh. sense. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, I mean, and you still had Finn, who was like, can all who per, looks like he's permanently constipated. 
Sorry. Okay, can we just deal with the fact that he just stepped in poop and he's walking through the house and then? Anyways, yeah, no, I, I get where you're coming from. Welcome back, y'all, to Kill Night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's not gonna edit this, buddy. <laughs> no, this is all done in one sitting. For those of you watching, I moved back home with my folks, and it's been very fucking crazy ever since. But anyways, let's move on with the review. You st okay, so you <laughs> so you still have Finn, who looks like Hugo Weaving's reject, with this is space. Okay, are we gonna um? Are we still talking about like the cameos? Because I really can't think of anyone else. I think it was mostly like um. No, we're talking about the maker. Oh, but the last one was um Malcolm in the Middle. Oh my God, that's right, Frankie Muniz. Yeah, Frankie Muniz was in this as well. By the way, for like a one minute shot, like not even no, like maybe ten minutes, just so you can see him get ripped apart. Okay, yeah, and that leads me to another point that I want to talk about, but we'll, I'll wait until we get there. Okay, and I, I just to wrap up the characters and whatnot, and then big shocking reveal: his ex girlfriend comes back. Yeah, if you guys watched the first one, that little brunette girl that was all over him, who then, <laughs> who then switched him out for his son. She comes back, and she's all mad at him because he never, like, called or texted or whatever. It's like, like, he's married, honey, and, like, you went off with a son. Like, I don't get her, like, oh, and she's all decked out in leather, like, some, like she's a badass, like, vampire hunter or something like that. And it's like... That one scene when they drop... There we go, now we're back. I think you no. might look at a different internet provider. Probably. Any, well, just, uh, that part I'll edit out. <laughs> Anyways, um... No, I mean, that scene when Finn and the ex-girlfriend crash into the water and then, like, come out of the water with their shirts off. Oh, my God, that's... <laughs> they're all slow motion, like, Baywatch and shit. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that part. Like, she's, like, trying to look like Lara Croft without, like, the Angelina Jolie references, and Finn just, once again, looks like he's, like, two steps away from crapping his pants. You know, they try way too hard to make him look badass and sexy. It's, like, it just doesn't do it. He just looks really stupid, honestly. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm better looking than Finn, and I never thought I would say that out loud. As long as you believe that, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so character-wise, I think that pretty much sums up everything, is that, you know, the cameos, once again, outweigh the main cast of characters. <laughs> kind of. I think it's kind of balanced out, actually. I think I think um, the fact that they brought back a, the girl from the first one kind of like balanced it out a bit. That, I mean, I will say that that was pretty cool when we she did come when we finally realized who she was. Yeah, and that is pretty cool. It's just it, what gets me though is like the Sharknado event has only happened twice, and she's been tracking it since the last, like the first movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, like, wouldn't she want to be wearing a wetsuit instead of leather? I mean. Have you swam in leather before? It's not easy. <laughs> I've never swam in leather. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, is there something you're not telling us? <laughs> I'm a very kinky girl. No joking. But like, um, yeah. No, like, that. Well, it, it makes me, how do you track a shark? Well, we'll get into that when we get to the plot. Yeah, we'll do that in the plot. But um, I, I feel like the CGI in this was a little bit worse than the second. I think the second one upgraded, and then the third one just kind of slightly downgraded a bit. It was like, well, the first one had, like, PlayStation 1 graphics, then fucking Sharknado 2 had PlayStation 2 graphics, and then Sharknado 3 went to PlayStation 1.5 graphics. <laughs> no, 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 no. It went from Windows 95 to Windows XP to Windows Vista. <laughs> the, the, one, the one O operating system that nobody liked. God, no. <laughs> that's a good point, though. Just, there was something not right about it. It was, it was very, it was downgraded, but not by much. Yeah, I, I think that I think that bothered me more than anything else in this movie was that it was just slightly downgraded. It was like just enough. Me like this is not as good as the second, but it didn't like just drop back down to as you said, PS One graphics. Like they weren't on tank, they weren't on tank controls, but they definitely weren't like high definition. Well, it's like it's like um, I don't know because like the second one was a huge success. Well, I mean every movie has been a huge success, but like the second one was a more was more of a success than the first one. So you would have thought they would have a bigger budget for the third one, but they kind of mm -hmm. like downgraded to cut corners. Like, 
shorts. It kind of like was being downgraded from like Brawlhalla to Gang Beasts. I like Gang Beasts. I yeah, like sure. Gang Beasts too. I'm just saying, like, if we're talking from like it. I, I I like Gang Beasts as well, but you've got Brawlhalla, Crazy Battle Royale, and then you have Gang Beasts. Not as crazy. Gang Beasts is like super fun though. Like, I, okay, so like, okay, not that this is the review or anything, but. Like a Brawlhalla is competitive, and then Gang Beast is just to have fun. Yeah. Know? Anyways, yeah. So I don't, I don't care what you say. Gang Beast is fun. Sorry. I'm not saying Gang Beast is not fun, but I'm just saying like it's it's two different things. So like then you got Sharknado Two, which is like the hyper competitive, and then you got Gang Beast slash Sharknado Three, which is yeah. You know, which, which, which one do you want to go for? The more high octane one, which is expected for the Sharknado, is to be nothing but a gore action fest, or do you want to go for a Gang Beast, which is kind of you want to noodle around a little bit? I mean, that's what it felt like with this one. I felt like I don't know. I felt like they were kind of running out of ideas because, like, they they what I think they realized in the movie they couldn't just take it out the bomb anymore. I don't remember mm -hmm. too. Much. Oh, oh my God! Oh, and then um, also going back to the cameos. What was the names of the newscasters who, uh... Oh, yeah, you had Savannah Gossip still shit. Because the bald-headed guy, he came back in the third one. Oh, yeah, Al Roker came back. Al Roker came back. Uh, Matt Lauer came back. But they die in this one. Just as well. It's kind of like Matt Lauer's career died. hi -o. Oh. <laughs> Damn, okay. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> He's getting back into it. Anyways, oh yeah, so they did come back. Um, you had I, did we still have was Kathy Kathy Lee and Hoda were getting drunk again? I'm having a hard time remembering the plot of this one. I remember. The, okay, so I think it's the one where that the the. Um, I'm pretty sure Kathy Lee and Hoda were the, getting drunk in the last one, but I don't remember they were getting hammered in this one. This one takes place at the the what was it Universal Studio? No. Yeah, Universal Studios. It was a theme park. I and think it was first. Park. That's the one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so no, they didn't make the cameo in this one. That was the second one that they were in there getting hammered. I think so. I can't remember. It's actually been quite a while. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so we're still talking about the graphics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. These ones, I mean, it just, it just didn't do it. I mean, you still had the gore all over the place, but the sharks just looked a little bit more cheap. They did. They really did. Um, and, you know, the, the deaths were all the same, too. Have you, like, every death in that movie was all, like, behind. Like, it was, a shark would only eat their heads and then move on, but it was, like, there, mm -hmm. was, a, there was, like, the first one was creative, at least, with deaths, because, like, people get eaten whole, and then... Um, mm -hmm. People would get torn half, but in this one, it was just the sharks would always go for the heads. Yeah, oh, that you're was... right about that. Like in the second one, it, they were ripping off arms, legs were coming off. Somebody got his balls ripped off. Yeah, dude, it was like it was way more creative. And then this one, just the deaths were just very like same. Stopped. It was the same. It was the same. It was like when you like it's like watching. Well, I don't know, because even Nightmare on Elm Street, he had a glove thing, but, like, even he was creative with his kills, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I think the violence and action factor were definitely limiting, because, I mean, they brought back the same tropes from the previous one, so you had, like, the chainsaw glove with uh, Tara Reid's character, you know, Finn, the chainsaw again, like an homage to Evil Dead, you know? Well, they did have a Disney Channel star. No, Nickelodeon. Never mind. Because um, the daughter's little boy crush thing. Oh yeah. He was a Nickelodeon too. Oh, she was on Nickelodeon too. Oh, no, Scott Bale so. It didn't last long, but she was on a Scott Bale so. Oh, okay. So I guess the daughter and her little friend were both on Nickelodeon. So that's probably why they toned it down a little bit. That, that no, yeah, you're probably right about that. But I mean, it was, still was. I don't know, man. I, I, this one just didn't do it for me, like the second one. E even though, like, everyone was, like, hyping it up. It's like, oh, but you get to see Dave will have a solo hall. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't get to see Kim Coates. Yeah, no, the second one was definitely way more exciting. Because I just, I remember getting so excited with every freaking um, cameo. But, like, it this was one, like Christmas. This one, this one was okay. It was 
definitely not the best in the series, but usually the third titles in series are like not as good as the second one. Was. Third ones are. I feel like. Oh yeah, no, sorry. Uh, I feel like third ones are like hit or miss. <laughs> like they're either going to be incredibly amazing, or they're going to miss the boss. I feel like you know. Okay, so I've made this this observation before, but usually in a series, the second one is always usually the best. If the, if it doesn't completely ruin the sequel or the first one. And then the third one is like, okay, because like Scream 2, I felt was better than the first Scream, but then like Scream 3 was like really not good. And then like, um, what else was there? Oh, Hell Hellraiser 3 was that was worse than the second one. Yeah. What's that? Oh, like, um, I don't know. There's a lot of different games and stuff too. Like Resident Evil 2 was really freaking good. Resident Evil 2 okay, was really yeah. good. It was such a, a step up from Resident Evil 1. And then Resident Evil 3 was good. It just didn't have that same like Resident Evil three but so it was just like there's a lot of series where the second one is the ultimate and then so yeah. I guess it could kind of be comparatively speaking, like Dark Souls came after Demon's Souls, so it was two separate ones. It was the second major kind of game in the Souls series. So and, and Dark Souls two was kind of like the third one. <laughs> That's but. a weird one chronological series but okay well e either way so g regardless what you think about this the the cgi and the special effects were just not that good the action sequences were very samey i mean i think we were predicting who was going to die and how pretty much like halfway through it well i already knew frankie minos was going to die because he's not a relevant person anymore so yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i feel like I feel like if this movie had more cameos, I feel like it might have been marginally better. Yeah, well, because, like, the second one was a fun movie. It was, like, a fun movie. Like, you got excited by the cameos, you know? Like, you got excited by Tara Reid tricking a doctor by hiding behind a door. Mm -hmm. This one, it was just, like, it was taking it way too seriously, you know? After the first 20 minutes, after the first 15 minutes, like, the opening scene, like, with the whole president, that was great. With Mark Cuban, that part was hilarious. Let's not mince words here. That action scene, the first ten minutes in the White House, it started off late. good. It started off good, but the plot just wasn't there. Like, I don't know how to describe it because I don't know. It just, I, I just, it started off good, but it, it just went downhill so fast, and then it got boring. It, it really did get boring towards the end. Um, yeah, so I guess we can probably just jump right into plot pretty much just summed up everything else. So you said you were something you want to jump into. Oh, no, the girl that came back from the first one. That's what I'm going to jump into. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, okay, so for, you said we're jumping into plot now. Um, so, yeah, the plot was all over the place. Because, like, like, it started off with him being late for a meeting with the president. and like then ceremony? Was, yeah, and then I got, the president got attacked. And at first I thought this was going to be like a political movie because it was like taking place in the White House. But then once they uh, got Mark Cuban and Ann Coulter to safety, it completely changed. Like all of a sudden he was like tracking. No, no, no. It was like, it was like multiple Sharknados turning into one, wasn't it? It was, yeah, there were multiple Sharknados converging in downtown DC. And so, like, you yeah. see like, you get like um, the Washington or the Washington monument going, like being destroyed by the sharks. Exactly. There's that, there's that scene when Mark Cuban's like, we've got to get to the bunker. It's the safest room in the entire White House. And like three sharks just crash through it to the roof. Yeah, so it started off good. That's where it got good. Because like if it was, if it maybe like if they got stuck in the White House, it was like all these political figures like attacking sharks. That would have been one thing. But the fact is it like trailed off. And then next thing you know, it was like he meets his old, his old girlfriend. And she's tracking it. Like how the fuck do you track a Sharknado? Seriously, I mean, like, I, I get yeah. it. You get storm chasers in, like, you know, um, what's it called, like Tornado Alley. Okay, well, hear me out though. Storm chasing is makes sense though because hurricanes and tornadoes, those are natural, ca like causes. A Sharknado only happened twice within the series. So how do you track something that just happened? And how does it keep happening more than once? It should be a freak accident. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, but I kind of I kind of want to just finish up the White House part just a little before we get into like the bad because I really want to talk about how handy this this the opening scene is like when Finn is rushing to get to the White House like he's sprinting like he's got the hounds of hell after him. 
Oh my god! And the way he's running, like his his like chest is all puffed, and he's like running like that, like like his chest is old man. <laughs> Seriously, like I was like, dude, you need a training bra. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like his age shows when he's running. You know, like he's having a he is having a hard time doing it <laughs> i mean he did not have his morning bloody mary before getting into this movie let's just leave it at that and i can imagine though that he ran <laughs> he ran that same way when <laughs> sci-fi called him for an opportunity to do another movie <laughs> i i kind of wonder if maybe this is also poking a little bit of fun at like the the has fallen series like london has fallen angel has fallen olympus has fallen possibly but i've never seen it because uh, I have seen London as Fallen. It was the first review I ever did for the project. Oh, I, should, I know what you're talking about, but I, I still never saw them. But I know and that movie is kind of like the Sharknado, except it takes itself way too seriously. Like, if they just hammed it up and did some comedy to it. I feel like Finn's character is a direct mockery, now that I think about it, of Gerard Butler from the Has Fallen trilogy. I mean, I would probably look up the dates to see if it is, but yeah, I could uh, see that. So Finn is getting stopped by the White House rent-a-cops, because that's pretty much what they looked like. They weren't even real guards. And then in comes Mark Cuban as the president. I also loved the fucking Shark Tank uh, references he was throwing in there, too. Like, he knows. The, the self-awareness was palpable. In this, But once again, it goes back to the opening scene was great, but it's everything after that was just... Like, yeah, the plot was just dry. There's nothing exciting after that first beginning. And, like, just to exemplify this, you've got Ann Coulter's character who's, like, hitting on Finn, like, blatantly. You've got all these other people posing for selfies, wanting Finn to sign a copy of the book that, by the way, terror his wife did. So why is he autographing a book that she wrote while she's like nine months pregnant and in Florida at this point? So when the sharks converge in DC, it's race. What happens? You get Finn and Mark Cuban pulling out guns like it's Judgment Day. And that was what confused me the most was because that was just incredible. They were doing like kung fu moves. They were like Surfing on the sharks down staircases. No, I think that was Ann Coulter that was that was uh, surfing on the sharks because they were going down the stairs and it looked so. Oh cool. yeah, yeah, that was it. And you Ann Coulter was surfing. I'm sorry, but like, yeah, you can't do that. She's shark surfing. You've got like Finn using his golden chainsaw award that he used to like saw oh, sharks God. in half. They showed a close-up of it. You could clearly tell it's a little metal toy. <laughs> Mattel toy. It really metal. metal. We call that a metal one here in the south. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and you've got Mark Cuban who was like doing matrix maneuvers with his guns, like he's like like using chain guns and gatling guns, like he was like freaking scarf face. You know, it's gonna be good when he's like, "This is gonna be." <laughs> didn't he say that in the movie he did he, he grabbed a weapon and he looks at him and he goes this is gonna be fun and it's like oh my god that was it no don't do that ever no and then followed by god bless america or they said something about that like god bless america or something like the home, like home of the free or whatever and then over in the corner there's <laughs> uncle bill raising his mouth <laughs> What was I saying? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, it's kind of sad the fact that Kirk Cameron Saves Christmas kind of raised the bar on everything we've watched so far. <laughs> it all comes back to Uncle Bill when you think about it. It does. It's, it's all tied up. It's all a conspiracy. I'm, he doesn't think so, but I'm on to him. What, okay, last thing before we talk about the rest of the plot. When, can you just imagine like this whole series being shot in like in media's res and then it cuts at the very end to Phil or to Finn talking to Kirk Cameron about the whole time and you have Kirk just like reacting with his stares for like <laughs> like like he's in the hospital and he's delusional <laughs> and he's telling Kirk Cameron about it and Kirk Cameron's like okay <laughs> and he's just doing he's just doing his reaction shots oh yeah and then Uncle and Uncle Bill's just sitting there in the corner the entire time <laughs> 
like Uncle Bill was the real hero of this movie. <laughs> Sorry, I totally didn't know my battery was low. I was going to say, because my internet was working, and then you just completely... <laughs> Anyways, okay. And we are back, y'all. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. This time, this was not my fault. My phone died. I am not good at keeping track of my phone's battery. <laughs> it happens. So, anyway, so we last left off talking about this, um, like... Well, we were continuing to loud um, Uncle Bill and Kirk Cameron. <laughs> um, what was the last thing you heard me say? Um, that he that um, Finn was delusional, lying in bed, and Kirk was just doing his reaction shots. Oh, yeah. Um, I said something after that, and I totally forgot what I said. <sighs> I'm, I'm... So that's the bulk of the <laughs> part of the plot. And then... It just becomes like a series of unfortunate events for um, for Finn because you have Tara Reed who is nine months pregnant with their little spawn, his their daughter who, by the way, for some reason goes goes from how she can't stand the air that he breathes to now being like this. Oh, he's my daddy, dude! Oh my god, she was using him for clout so fucking bad. She went okay, like what was it? Um. I think it was like this lady that was operating the roller coaster. Yes. And she asked a question. She goes, "How does how do, or she said some? It was like very snarky. She's like, "Well, how does having a dad who saved the world from a Sharknado sound to you?" It was like really yes. like you mm. fucking. And then yeah, you pointed out she hated his guts in the first one, but it was like, oh, now you're gonna use his name to get your to get whatever you want, little bitch. Can we say like gold digger and training? Well, it's like yeah. How did she go from hating her dad? To fucking name dropping him to get on roller coasters and shit. I mean, it's it's one thing with like with Tara Reed's character because like it was kind of like the end of the movie speed. Like they go from like this, you know, it, extenuating circumstances bring them together. Yeah. Oh my god, did you see the third one? It was so good. With the third speed. Yeah, the one. No, where I stopped after the second one. <laughs> the one where they're on the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I missed that one completely. I'm making a Family Guy reference. Oh, fair enough. I was going to say, I'm like, well, I have no idea because don't forget, I did, because there was a sequel to Titanic. What? Yeah, Titanic 2, and guess who developed it? Asylum, the same company that did this. Like, was it a legit sequel to it, or? Apparently, well, no, because there, could, there was only one Titanic, but they did a, I don't, I mean, Whatever. We'll talk about that later on off camera. We're still talking about this piece of shit. Yeah. But yeah, no, that pissed me off, though. She was, like, name-dropping her dad everywhere she went, and she's all acting proud of him, but it was like, you fucking told him that... Didn't she, like, tell him she wished he would die in the first one, or, like... Yes! Yeah, she was fucking mean to him in the first one. After he fucking saved her. And Several then told him name fuck him. Yeah, fuck, yeah, dude! Like, fucking fuck you, little bitch. Whatever, <laughs> And then on top of it, she's got her little entourage classy. Just zoom right in on that happening. You got then she's got her little entourage. You've got oh, and then you have Tara Reed's character. You have Tara Reed and her mom, and her mom is drunk as a skunk the entire time, and keeps trying to get her nine-month pregnant daughter to drink with her. Dude, I know she's like, you can have a drink or two. It's like. She's pregnant. What part of not drinking alcohol don't you understand? Uh, what, uh, dude, three letter, three words, feel alcohol syndrome? Well, she like, has that. That's why she lacks that understanding. You're, you're right. Art imitates life. <laughs> what was the point of having the mother there other than just so, like, Tara Reed doesn't have to spend the entire time sitting by herself staring her into space when she can have somebody else sitting next to her while she stares into space? <laughs> You know, I noticed this about the the third one and the second one. It's that um, she's kind of her own little subplot. Because, like, while Finn is doing this and their daughter's doing that, she's just with her mom and like they're not doing anything. She's, like, she's supposed to be a, a main character, but she has, like, subplot character, like, storyline going on. She has, no she has no point in being in this movie. And then somehow at the end, she comes back to help him. It's like, yes! it's the point of that. <laughs> Nothing. I don't get it. Like, yeah, you're you're 100 percent right that it's it, it's like last 
It's like a Shyamalan movie. Like each character has to have their own subplot. Yeah, dude. Uh, Cause like in the second one, I mean, I I can't understand the second one, cause she got her arm eaten off. She yeah. went to the hospital and she tricked Billy Ray Cyrus. Um, but and then that was to help him at the end. But in this one, she literally had no reason to have a subplot because she was with her mom and her husband is miles away. With the girl that liked him in the first one, like the plot makes no sense. Oh my! And, and why does this, every woman? This, go ahead, sorry, I cut you off. I was just gonna say, why does every woman in this universe like him? He's not even that good looking. I know. I mean, he's. I'm trying to remember which character he. Now that I think about it, he kind of does look a little bit like Gerard Butler with a touch of Kirk Cameron. He's kind of got the Kirk Cameron like stare. I can see the Kirk Cameron. I don't see the Gerard Butler. I'm not a fan of Gerard Butler, but he's better looking than him, at least. Yeah, fair enough. But, I mean, so, what was the... There was, and going back to the subplot, there was no point for this movie to be shot in floor in Orlando. This was like... It's like they took one idea, and then they had to... They ran out of a budget, and then they got a new investor on ground, so they completely redid the plot. Because at first, I thought this was going to be like an attack on DC kind of thing. That's what I thought too, and that's why I, I I was thinking like this is going to be a political movie, but like not political political. Just it would take place in the White House, and there you'd have all the White House staff like fighting sharks off, and that's where they should have left it. Yeah, uh, and then it's this entire time of him trying to get from D.C. to Orlando to be reunited with his wife, while the shark NATOs plural are converging on Florida, and he's spending his entire time driving through like ass end of nowhere, North Kakalaki. I'm and sorry. Somehow, amidst this, he runs into, as you said, his ex girlfriend. Okay, and I'm not I'm not criticizing anyone because every couple is different. Some couples like to spend every waking time, every spe- uh, waking day of their lives together, and some some like to be separated. Um. So, but personally, I don't understand why if your husband is going to be a, like awarded by the White House, like the president oh. himself. Why would you be in Orlando with your mom? Um, that that's 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 just there's no reason why. Okay, going back to the whole subplot, there's no reason why Tara Reid needs a subplot because that doesn't make sense. But then it's like it's like the the whole movie just doesn't have a plot because the I mean, <laughs> the first one took place in what California and it makes sense. They didn't really need a plot because it was a Sharknado. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, how does that happen? The mm-hmm. second one, he was trying to rescue his like um, what was it? His like brother-in-law or like. Oh yeah, Mark McGrath does come back into this. It makes an appearance oh, yeah. in this one briefly. Yeah, but in the second one, he was trying to save his family because um, they were all in the same town together. But in this one, they're just running off to find this Sharknado, and it's like it makes no sense. Yeah, it absolutely. So he literally, so he can't leave DC because he can't fly out of DC to Florida because the Sharknado has pretty much grounded everything, which pretty much makes reasonable sense. So why didn't they keep it in the White House then? You know, like why could that movie would have been so much better if like fucking like the White House staff are fighting off sharks or like DC in general? Like, give me something about my hometown. Like, I want to see sharks sliding down M, like sliding down Thomas Jefferson Avenue in Georgetown to like break through the Central Fountain and then land on a table at, at Nick's Riverside Grill, that would have made my day. Well, that would have made sense, though, because, like, the first one took place in L.A., or was it L.A.? I think it was L.A., wasn't it? Something, L- L.A. or San Francisco. It was California. The second one took place in New York, so this one should have taken place in D.C., but um, it exactly. didn't. It should, and, but, I mean, and somehow, while Finn is driving through North Krakalaki, there is like a minor out outlier of the Sharknado that lasts for one minute, and then in comes the psycho wagon with Frankie Munoz and his ex girlfriend looking at something out of like Mad Max. Right, <laughs> they're all decked out in leather and acting badass. Is like, are you telling me? Do you that remember the comment? Pitch? Did you remember the comment that I said to you when that part rolled out? No. So who wants to masturbate first? Um, I just remember her thinking like I just remember thinking like, wait, this bitch was training for a whole year just to come up to this 
very moment in her life. Like, how did she know there's going to be a third Sharknado? And how did she know it was going to combine to be a, a super giant Sharknado? Like, and if she was tracking the Sharknados, wouldn't you think experts were going to be doing this as well? Not little rogue wannabe Angelina Jolie rejects off the assembly line? Seriously, like this, like it just it made no sense. And she had like fucking maps in the van sprawled out of like locations and shit. Yeah. How do you track a shark NATO? It <laughs> looks like an end of the world bunker inside an airstream trailer. That's another thing that pissed me off is people kept talking about the apocalypse and how it was in the world. It was one, uh, and this is going back to the first movie too. They kept talking about how it was apocalyptic and how like he stopped the apocalypse it was like it was a sharknado and it was only one city and it didn't destroy the whole city at all exactly and like so, <sighs> yeah this movie was all over the place is what it comes down to and i yes. think that was the biggest downer as we talked about was it was not even the cgi T cgi aside take the special effects out of the equation the plot was just Harry's about to squeeze out her own spawn. Daughter for, daughter is, you know, trying to get laid. Sure, why not? She's 18, possibly. Finn's trying to get to her, and then somehow they realize that the only way to eliminate the Sharknado is to go into space. I was just about to bring it there. Um, and yeah, once again, so Hellraiser 4... It's <laughs> Leprechaun 4 in space. Um, there's a fucking... Thing. It's like Portal 2 all over again. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, it started off in D.C., and then it hit the roads, and then they fucking ended up in like a military base, and then they went to space. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. I forgot about the, the diluted little, like... I, I can't even call it an Air Force base. Coming from a military family, I've seen military bases all over the place. I know what the ones that look like major ones to like podunk OPs. This one was like a cult compound militia from like Kripke's revolution. Okay. It's two for two, right? Jesus. I just spit out a piece of me laughing. <laughs> I'm normally not this gross, I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was gonna say, do you remember the part where the guy stood up on the car on the <laughs> fucking on the well, carousel or on the uh, roller coaster? No, no, it was at the base. He like stood up on an army truck and he started shooting them or something like that. And then one knocked him out. Like it didn't even kill him. He <laughs> yes. hit him and he fucking knocked back and <laughs> KO'd him. That's that, was funny. that was pretty good but then the whole past comes to why Finn is so hesitant to talk about his family for because apparently he didn't get enough Finn's got some daddy issues with that one because his dad is David Hasselhoff who saw that and, one because I did so they have to go into space to apparently blow up the Sharknado, which is basically like they were ripping off of Armageddon. Well, there are lots of... Terror, oh, and then don't forget, Tara Reid comes in. She wants to go into space with them. In fact, she does go into space with them. Okay, we have to talk about that, because that was the funniest shit ever. Okay, so anyone who knows NASA, they have very high security. Like, you can't just walk in the door and get yourself on a rocket ship. That's not going to happen. You're going to get busted before you even make it past the fucking main office. Okay. Somehow, fucking Finn and his dad were in the spaceship, and they were just about to, like, set to uh, shoot off. off. Yeah, they were about to take off into space. And somehow, fucking Terry just, <laughs> just like, fucking, like, walks her way into the fucking rocket ship and goes to space with them. How does... How does she keep outsmarting people? In the second one, all she had to do was hide behind a door, and Billy Ray Cyrus was like, well, she's gone now. We can't find her. And this one, she just walked right in, like nothing, nothing's wrong, and she gets to go to space. They would have canceled that whole mission. <laughs> and throw in the fact that neither Finn nor his dad were surprised to see her. No! Finn was more concerned about her giving birth during re-entry back into the Earth's atmosphere than anything else and they still go off on the mission even though like 
the sharks are now going into space and still attacking them from a zero atmosphere environment. No, okay, it's one thing to be attacking them outside of water, but in space, they freeze to death. I mean, I feel like they took the idea from the beginning of the second one when, like, they were attacking the planes to, yeah, like, uh, they're like, well, let's just take this one step further. Ground, sky, space. Yeah, the fourth one's going to take place on Saturn. Or hell. <laughs> or heaven. Um, yeah, the sharks, no. I can just see St. Peter with, like, a sword, like, fighting off the sharks in heaven. This is going to be fun. <laughs> and, and, and Satan's going, bitch, please. <laughs> and he's just enjoying it all. No, but seriously, though, like, I just, I can't get over the fact that fucking Tara Reid, of all people, okay, Tara Reid is such a joke, but she somehow manages to fool doctors, and she somehow manages to fucking sneak on a uh, spaceship. How does she do that? How does she do that? And she was like, I think she was walking too, wasn't she? Like she wasn't even trying to hurry. She just fucking walked in the space. No, she was just cruising along. I mean, I don't know if like having like that that cum sprout inside her was like giving her extra intelligence or something, but Well it's like I don't understand how she has these skills. I think we started calling her ninja, didn't we? Because she fucking <laughs> smarts these people somehow. <laughs> Like samurai read or something like that. Like, Realistically, they would look at her and be like, "Ma'am, are you lost? <laughs> the hospital's that way." Ma'am, do you want some change? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, just, it blows my mind how she's not into a fucking spaceship. And so. they go into space, and they have to do something in space. They were there. No, they had to like shoot a laser because remember all those Sharknados were joining into one. Yes, that was it. So, like, shoot a laser from space. So, was it going the route of Austin Powers? The sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads. <laughs> it's the rocket that looks someone's Johnson. <laughs> I love that part. It's just a little prick. <laughs> Seriously, like, it was. Like, a laser, first of all, scientists from around the world would notice if there was a dilapidated, derelict hunk of metal floating out in space with a laser cannon on it. Yeah, I don't think people realize, though, and I think it's mostly just Americans, because we're not, I'm, I'm just going to say it, Americans are not the brightest people in the world. Um, Thank you. A lot of people don't realize, though, is that, like, okay, so I'll take, I'll, I'll do this for example. Um... Like, I use my old Android phone, I would go, like, to look on the internet, there, there'd be, like, news articles of what's going on and stuff, and there was always an end-of-the-world article saying, like, there was a meteor headed for Earth, and it's supposed to collide in, like, 20 days or something like that, and in the comments, people would be freaking out, and not one person asked, like, does ever, everyone around the world agree with that? Because you realize, you realize, if there really was a meteor heading to Earth, people around the world would see it. Scientists would see it. Even people with telescopes would see it. People don't realize, though, is that, you know, like you said, um, how did you say it? You were like, uh, people around the world would know if there was a metallic item in space. It's, you know, it's not just Americans. It just be If we don't see it, that doesn't mean the whole world doesn't see it. There's more countries out there that look mm -hmm. into space and know what's out in the atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, and once again, if this was the second one, it would be so completely hammy that it would just be funny. But this one was just not hammy enough. It was like they went from being 100% self-aware to being like 50% self-aware. And I think that's really where this movie tanked. Well, I feel like the first one, they didn't really expect it to go far. They knew it was a bad movie. And the second one, they're like, oh, they knew it was a parody. So they were going to make even more of a parody. And the third one, they took it way too seriously. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like, they still managed to destroy the Sharknado, even though David Hasselhoff... <laughs> it's destroyed, gets killed by the sharks in space, and then you have wait for it, Tara Reed gets eaten by a shark in space, and then Finn rides the shark like a running of the bulls through the atmosphere. He's riding the shark like a sailboat through the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> I know, right? Man manages to survive re-entry, didn't get burnt up in the atmosphere while still riding. It's almost like, did you, uh, okay, did you ever see um, Dr. Strangelove? What? 
Guess that answers that question. <laughs> At the end of Doctor Strange, it was a Stanley Kubrick movie. The actor Slim Pickens literally rides the yeah rides rides the bomb the down on the atmosphere. <laughs> yes, this was, yeah, this was kind of like a remake of Doctor Strange Love with, with Finn riding the shark through the atmosphere. Kind of. I mean, yeah, I could see that. In a way, though, I mean, I think honestly, I think Sharknado. Uh, maybe I don't. Know. I feel like Sharknado would probably just remade the scene if it, they were going for that kind of like parody. But maybe in a way, it was kind of a nod to it. I don't know. I, it's, it's, hard yeah. tell. it's hard to tell because I mean, this movie I feel like takes a lot of little things from other movies and other things, but just enough to keep it below the radar. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's got Tara Reid in it, so no, but. Um, oh, yeah. We're being redundant. It's ironic though, because like the sharks aren't turning like freezing to death in space, and then he's riding sharks back in the atmosphere without singeing them to a crisp. It's funny how they don't know how like gravity and shit work. <laughs> he had no singe marks on his body when he got to the ground, and then still took the chainsaw to the shark that somehow that ate Tara Reed comes inside, doesn't rescue her first, rescues the child that was born inside the shark during re-entry okay for some women it takes it can take days to go to give birth to a baby but she did it all in a shark inside of a shark stomach within minutes well I, americans this is what you're doing wrong just get eaten by a shark guarantee you you're like a nicholas cage movie gone in 60 seconds i mean to be fair though some women can give birth in minutes but like it was like what less than five minutes to fall to earth from space and a shark there's no way that she would have had that baby in time. Seriously. I mean, I just have this mental image of her, like, lying inside the shark. He's like, okay, shark, honey, we got two minutes. Let's do this. And then, like, didn't he pull it out? Like, wasn't it, like, the umbilical cord was cut and everything? It was just ready to go. <laughs> There's, like, no... It was just... It was, like... A it was, like, a pizza delivery service. A reach in, grab it, hey, check it out. We're all set. <laughs> when I first saw it, I was like, oh, my God, it was a and it, I didn't even put two and two together that I was shaking. Yeah, I think I had to point that out to you. Yeah, but I was like, like, there's a baby in her stomach. And didn't he name the, oh, and what did he name the baby? Like, it was named after his dad, but it had another shark or fish related, like, centric name, like Finn or. Oh my God, what was it? Gil, yeah. Gil, Gil. that was, it. yeah, Gil, after the dad. Um, so you know, and then he had to name it Gil, Finn and Gil. And then the movie ends with a piece of the debris falling on Tara Reid <laughs> credits. I know, right? That ca that caught me off guard. I was not expecting that either. She just looked up and then, <laughs> boom, it was done. And she didn't even have any expression on her face. She's like... <laughs> she just looked up. Well, I think she tried to scream. Like, tried. I, I saw some neck muscles slightly protruding. <laughs> Finn! Yeah. I'll never forget the first movie. How much, like, how every time she screamed his name, that fucking neck bulge, like, vein, which is bulge. Like, she was trying so hard to scream. She couldn't do it anymore. Her voice is so fucked up. I thought you were going to pee yourself, like, the second or third time that she did the breathy Finn voice. Uncle Bill would have done a better job than her. I still do it, though. Like, randomly, I'll just, like, like, if my mom's talking to me, I'm just like, Finn! <laughs> I can't wait for, like, you and Will to, like, do something, like, just out of nowhere, you just bust out Finn and just confuse the hell out of Will. Actually, I kind of do, I, I do it to Will. I just go, like, Will! <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't know what I'm saying. Nova was hot. I should, like... Huh? Nova? She was hot. The brunette? Yeah, I thought she was hot. She was pretty. I thought she I should do that. I should do that to Fran and see. If, well, no, Fran would definitely would not get it. No, probably not. I mean, unless she watches this video, but or she, she but, might. But regardless, so this movie, take it if you want to. Uh, unless you really feel compelled to watch the rest of the series, like we kind of feel contractually obligated to. I want okay. I I want to see what happens because I guarantee you. She, I like. I have a feeling. Like I think I. I just feel like she's gonna like come back to life. Like she's gonna be like a superhero or something. Like I'm, I have I'm already spoiled that for you. Huh? Didn't your mom already spoil it for you? Well, she said the kids died, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, I thought she spoiled but something about Tara Reid. 
Well, no, because like before the third one, I was like, I have a feeling they're gonna go to space, and they did. So. Oh, that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Otherwise, I've been trying to keep all the spoilers alert, but I bet you they're gonna be like, they're gonna like turn into superheroes, and like they're gonna fight a giant shark, <laughs> like they're gonna fight the Sharknado. <laughs> like, you know, I think you know what I bet? I bet like they take DNA out of like the child out of Gil and like clone her or something ridiculous. Oh my god, that's a good idea. Well, wouldn't it clone him though? Well, I mean, the bait. Well, we're, we're analyzing this too deep. It's a Sharknado movie. They'll probably take its placenta and like a- analyze the the yeah. fucking genetics and shit, and they'll make her like a little cloner because, like, in the movies, they can clone a, a full grown human being with memories and everything. But you know, who says yeah. in real life it, it would start as a as an embryo, a fetus? Yeah. Oh I mean, my! God. What if that's what happens? What if they recreate her as an embryo and through the whole movie she's like growing rapidly <laughs> and then by the end of the movie she's a full grown adult and she helps him once again. Or, or, or they try to clone her like that but somehow shark DNA gets there so she turns into like this half human half shark like kind of like bathroom girl from the second one. Or like she fucking she's like half robot and she has no emotions because that would be the perfect role for her. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, I mean, once again, we're being redundant because she has no emotions anyways. I mean, once again, Uncle Bill has more emotions than Tara Reed's character. You know what? We're gonna have to watch the fourth one and see because I'm dying to know what happens. Yeah. So um, we've been talking about this for over like an hour now. So um, <laughs> I think this is gonna be our. Lo- I think it's this is gonna be our longest review yet. Holy shit! Well, I mean, aside from like having a put together two like clips and edit some shit out but yeah yeah but either way um this movie take it or leave it I mean, if you have to see one of the sharknadoes just see the second one because that's easily the bet the that's the going to be the most bang for your buck this one watch the first 10 i mean this is free if you have amazon prime so i yes. mean watch the first 10 minutes just so you can see mark cuban be like this is going to be fun See, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, the second one is my favorite so far, but I don't want to say much more until the fourth, fifth, and sixth one I we watch because I just want to make sure, you know, like, what if the sixth one's the best one, you know? Okay, yeah. out of the ones that we've seen so far... The second one's the best. Second one's the best. No questions about it. Third one's the second out of the three. The, the third one's the second one is the second favorite of mine. The first one's just... Eh. Third yeah, one's not uh, like them. It's just, eh. well, I mean, we'll see what the fourth one's all about, but uh, this one, it just it was just too busy for me. Yeah, like, if they would have just stuck to DC, or if it was going to have to be in space, they could have just went there in the beginning of it, like, maybe right after the whole DC fight, and then the rest of the movie was in space. That would have yeah. been good, too. But the fact it, is, is, like, they didn't do that. They didn't go that route. They went from DC to a freaking... They went there. It was mostly filler. It was mostly filler content. Yes. They went to space. It was like it was like they had the idea for DC in space, but they're like, but what do we do in between? Mm-hmm. They couldn't think of a whole story in space. Yeah, I mean it's, it's so they did the road trip. They did the dare. Okay, and right as of course, right. We're getting ready to wind down <laughs> this review is when like this craps out again. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Well. So, long story short, it was just way too busy. Uh, we pretty much agreed that special effects are eh, not great, not bad, but not great. But it just, it just didn't cut. It didn't cut the mustard. No, I was expecting like MCU graphics. You know, I'm not joking. <laughs> Touche. Yeah. I mean, so, give me Toxic Avenger. Give me something handmade to laugh about. Seriously, give me something. But no, I totally agree with you. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so, I mean, anything else you want to bring up with us before we wind it down? No, I think you said it all. Honestly, the third one, like like Boogie said, if you want to watch if you want to watch the best one in the series, watch the second one. Exactly. I mean, this is just... Eh, take well, it or leave. The, the second one even covers the first one, too. Like, it's no... Like, a Sharknado happened. They put a bomb in the, the tornado to kill it. Because you can kill air. And then the second one has another one, so that's pretty Why much not? It. Trump thinks you could. But this is coming from the same guy that encourages you to inject bleach in your side. <laughs> he wanted to nuke a hurricane, but big difference. Eh, they're both smarter than him. Well, it's funny because like, people on Twitter are like, that's literally the plot of Sharknado. <laughs> <sighs> 
Anyways, y'all, so if you guys have seen this this complete piece of crap movie, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, let us know if you thought it was hilarious. If you want to downvote it like uh, the chick from God's Not Dead 2, feel free to do that as well. Either way, we don't care. <laughs> um, either way, I mean, well, no jokes aside, I mean, let us know what you think about the movie. If you did like it, let us know what you liked about it or what you disliked about it. Um, I read every comment. I try to read every, reply to every comment. And as always, big thank you to my partner in crime for uh, watching this uh, insanity with me. Um, always a pleasure. Uh, links in the description below to say again. I said I always get way too excited watching these movies. I know. This is like, but some people get excited about watching like the new Marvel movies. We get excited about watching Sharknado because that's our brand of our caliber. It is like the highlight of my day. <laughs> I think you Sharknado more. Sorry, I, you got pushed aside by Sharknado, my Finn. <laughs> God. But if y'all don't know who Ray is, um, if you're sleeping in a rock with a secretary named Monica Lewinsky, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, check her out. Links in the description below to her YouTube and her Twitter page. Um, and she's also an excellent author. She's got a couple of books out, and she's got a new one in the works that a few of us are looking over. Um She's definitely awesome, guys. You definitely need to go check her out. So, once again, as always, a big thank you to Christoph Ray for being a sponsor of the Boogie Night Project. If you like low poly horror games with an emphasis on character, actual plot development, actual character development, and actual ambience, check them out. Links in the description below as well. You won't be let down. So, of course, with that being said, then, before I call it a night, if you like the Boogie Night Project and you want to find out more, I do have a Twitter page as well as a public Discord channel, and links to both of those are in the description below, as well as a link to my temporarily defunct Twitch page. And, hey, if you're morbidly curious, I do have a Patreon where for as little as $1 a month, you get access to exclusive content such as the patron-only section of my Discord and once-a-week patron-only playthroughs. Otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic night that does not have any technical issues, unlike this recording, and we will catch you all on the flip side, all right? Peace. Bye. Hey, y'all. While my gratitude knows no bounds for every single bit of love and support y'all have shown for me over the years, there are a few people that I legitimately want to take a few minutes to thank for their unending help and support. Uh, first of all, obviously, Christoph Frey, not just for being a sponsor of the Boogie Night Project, but also for letting me use his music from Gabba Transistor for in my streams, as well as him kind of coming up with his own little fragment for my new introduction to um, the Boogie Night Project. And speaking of introductions, the intro, as well as my YouTube banner page, um, were done by the amazing Oren. You might know him as Oren VDK, as well as Oren from Couple K. Takes. Thank you so much, Oren. I really do appreciate the time you took to put together everything from the banner to the beautifully done introduction that merged perfectly with Christoph's music from Gabba Transistor. So big thank you to them. And also, this would not be possible with the help of my extremely amazing patrons, both current and former, uh, such as Lexi Kitty, Silverleaf, Barry Grave, Harkov, Jeray, Larian, and Oren, as well as a few others that have come and gone over the years. Y'all well, this would not be possible without your help and your support. Um, I know I have not been able to provide much in the way of um, uh, giving back in Patreon rewards, but I am in the process of revamping my Patreon as well as the rewards that I can do, so be prepared. Um, I know I joke about it, uh, saying that if you're morbidly fascinating, check it out, but if you do want to give um, to the Boogie Night Project, that is the easiest way to do so, and I am legitimately setting aside funds to buy more hardware for my computer, as well as making things look more professional. But once again, very big thank you all to everybody who has supported me from the beginning all the way to the present, um, as well as those individuals that have gone out of their way to help. So once again, guys, thank you so much for all your constant love and support. My gratitude knows no bounds, and I'll catch you on the flip side. All right? Peace.